what it do, Flight Crew, FTC, Flight T, stand up! It may be May, but June is on the way. Jimmy, I roll it! Greatest player in NBA history. Away with this. Michael. Oh yeah, disclaimer guys, got some construction working outside the house, uh, just bear with me, it's a little bit of noise, it's gonna be going on like this for the next like week, but... Jordan, LeBron James, should be bad in the background. maybe Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, no, it's Jamal Murray with two minutes left in a playoff game. Can someone explain to me exactly how this man keeps doing this? Go ahead and hey, add Jamal two Murray more different. Brandon Roy 2 to Jamal Murray's laundry list of playoff heroics. I'm not even a Lakers fan, and this shot can't keep me getting away with this title. If I have to watch this man hit one more impossibly clutch shot to beat my glorious king in the playoffs, I swear I'm gonna. Hot rolling with the glorious Jamal team. Murray might just be the greatest playoff riser in postseason history. Hey, and what I can say, we definitely have to start talking about Jamal Murray a lot more. I think I feel like for some reason the NBA is trying to like look to the left a little bit and just be like, um, shit, we don't see nothing that's going on. Nah, bro, y'all see it. I feel like Murray at this point because you have to remember when you perform like this in the playoffs. You get way much more, like, you know what I'm saying, props and respect. So, Murray, low-key, might just got to be into the top seven if he isn't already of right now as NBA players, not of all time. But he definitely has to move up in the rankings. I think he, he's 100% better than, you know, Booker, um, you know, the um, – what, what other guards, you know what I'm saying, like, in the league. Like, he's low-key, at this point, better than Dame Dollar, I might say. I don't know. Um – yeah, it's a, you know, he's definitely better than the Maxis and stuff. Uh, but, yeah, Murray's up there. I've got the numbers. He's definitely there. not, you know, better than, obviously, Curry and uh, uh, Kyrie and stuff. But Prove it. Everybody shot else, most likely, yeah. Maker. Do you put Murray over Morant? I'm not going to lie to you. You can't, It's not really fair to say Murray because he's been injured and stuff. But, like, I personally to me, I'm going to probably take Ja still. But Murray is, hey, that might be an argument right there. What do y'all think? It's like he doesn't even back down from nothing, too. He doesn't fear shit, which is great. Today's video oh. is Five King Player. Your life, King's pick. Jamal W Murray skipping the chat. NBA player throughout the regular Comment season. Me. He's a great second option. Compliments Jokic's game really well. Does what his team needs of him. But come the playoffs, Jamal Murray is a god. Time and time again, Murray has proven that in the postseason, there might not be a single player better than him down the stretch, in the clutch, in the entire NBA today. And it is the most baffling, beautiful, and frustrating thing I've ever had to watch. Jamal Murray's playoff career box plus minus ranks 43rd all time and wow. 27th among all players post 2000. This makes him one of the greatest playoff performers the game has ever seen. Ahead of players like Tatum, Kyrie, and Pau Gasol. But his regular season career box plus minus ranks 250th all time. Jamal what? Murray plays like a first ballot Hall of Famer in the playoffs and Hito freaking Turkoglu in the regular season. <laughs> that, my friends, I mean, like, to be fair, I mean, it's crazy because now that High Roller is putting it this way, he might go down in NBA history for pulling off I only come to work when it's time in the playoffs versus the regular season versus like, which I was just about to ask y'all. The obvious question is you want someone to perform at their best capability in the playoffs because it can lead to a ring. But, like, you've got to still perform in the regular season, too. That matters. Um, you know, which one are you, would you rather take? Uh, but that's a crazy stat right there. Is no Power exaggeration. According to Basketball References Box Plus Minus Scale, Jamal Murray's career regular season BPM puts him at about the caliber of a decent starter to sixth man. His career playoff BPM puts him in between an all-star and an all-NBA level talent. Damn. The man has never even logged a minute in an all-star game. Now, usually in the playoffs, decent players see a dip in production. Good players have relatively steady numbers transitioning from the regular season to the playoffs, and great players elevate their game and do slightly better in the postseason. But not Jamal Murray. His numbers don't just get better, he becomes a whole different caliber of player. Wow. Because throughout his career, his production and efficiency jump significantly in the playoffs compared to the regular season. This shouldn't even be possible. The playoffs are supposed to be more difficult, slower. The teams you are facing are better. But where others fold under pressure, Jamal Murray basks in it. 
In fact, here's a graph of the top 50 scorers in NBA history according to their career points per game and the difference between their regular season scoring and their playoff scoring. There's four Sheesh. different quadrants here, and whatever quadrant a player falls in will give you a general idea of how well they score in the playoffs compared to the regular season. Now, you don't want to be in this area down here. Less production on worse efficiency. This area up here is where the playoff heroes are. Big players who play well in big moments. Some greats who land in this quadrant of playoff fallers are the usual suspects. Joel Embiid, James Harden, Wilt Chamberlain, but there's even some names here that you wouldn't expect, like Larry Bird and Kareem. What's Curry, Michael yeah. Jordan, Luka, Curry, and Durant I are among the many players who score more in the Yo, playoffs. it's just so crazy, though, ladies. This is like almost the likeness. They're always like, it seems like when it, whenever Harold does these types of graphs, I always notice that Curry and Iverson are always like, you know what I'm saying, close to each other. Pause. But they aren't quite um, as efficient in terms of like, as they are in the regular season. The skill gap which on that part. just how hard it is to make it into this quadrant of the best playoff performers in terms of scoring. Hakeem Olajuwon was a playoff demon. And just behind him are AD and Giannis, who have Damn, been- Damn, AD's up there in playoff performances. Awesome in the playoffs. He's up the higher than LeBron. Bro, at this point, you cannot say that like every season outside, maybe like the first four seasons of LeBron's career, because I do remember that Cavs team. That, it, was, it was definitely like, you know, you got to give that credit during that Pistons run 07. But like, I want to say- Nah, because, like, even, like, 09, too, because, like, you can't really say, like, even just because they had Mo Williams and, like, Edgowskis and, like, Aaron Severo, um, and, like, I remember Booby Gibson. Come on, man, y'all. That's real NBA knowledge right there. But I'll just say, I say when he went to the Heat. So, like, yeah, now nah, he didn't have help his first, like, maybe seven years until, like, when he go to the Heat in the seven-year, eight-year NBA career mark. Um, but yeah, you can't definitely say like he definitely had the most help out of every superstar. It's definitely true because you don't even see Jordan anywhere in this part of the um, the chart help. You know, like and that just shows like because you, even though, like even let's see in the playoffs like you don't even see Scotty uh, Pippen anywhere. Like was Scotty Pippen be an All Star in today's NBA game? My personal opinion, I don't even think so, bro. I think Scotty was just like another um, the McDaniel's dude on the Timberwolves their careers. So where does Jamal Murray land, you might ask? He's way up here. On his own planet mm. as arguably the greatest playoff riser in NBA history. Throughout his career, Jamal Murray has averaged 7.4 more points per game on better efficiency in the postseason compared to the regular season. As the stakes get higher, Murray gets better almost every single time. One interesting stat right here you got to definitely give credit to. I just noticed in the middle of this graph. So basically, if you're more on the left side, which is like the green side where like, okay, the top is like Bernard King, Kunpo, and Davis, um, that's more of like the playoff side. And then if you're more on the right, you know what I'm saying, it's more regular season versus postseason. But if you're closer to like the middle, you know what I'm saying, it's really that not much of a difference. You definitely got to give credit. You got MJ, LeBron, Kobe, Wade, Bird, like right there, like straight up in the middle, which really means that like it doesn't make a difference at all. Regular season and playoff, you're going to get the same LeBron. You're going to get the same Kobe. You're going to get the same Michael Jordan. You're going to get the same Larry Bird. Um, and you even see Westbrook there, you know what I'm saying, surprisingly too. You're going to get the same, you know what I'm saying, player addition regular season and playoff. So there's not going to be that much of any type of slacking whatsoever. Um, you know, you know, my glorious King Steph Shev with the word out Curry, man. He's he's right there. This is technically towards the middle, too. You know, you got the, the Kevin Durant and, you know, Harden. Um, so, time. yeah. Every all -time Damn, I just noticed. Look at Trey Young. Damn. Yo, I ain't going to lie. That's bad, Kev. That's bad, Kev. I even kind of hate to admit, too, like, you do have Iverson and Carmelo on the far right to the regular season. To be honest and fair, they, first of all, only got together in those first two years in the Nuggets. You know what I'm saying? And that's it. Most of the time, Iverson and Melo was like, they were the only superstar on their team, so they didn't really have help like that. So it's not like I don't think to a point, to a certain extent, it doesn't necessarily mean that they don't perform all the way as they should to. That just means that, you know what I'm saying, the numbers wasn't the same as how they performed in a full 82-game season. If you really think about it, if you're, because majority of the time, I was paying attention back then, you know what I'm saying, day two, 
Mellow and Iverson, in, especially in their prime prime, they're playing 60-plus games, like 70-plus games, you know what I'm saying, throughout the regular season. You know, y'all, you got to put it back. If you're playing at least 60 games through an 82-game regular season, it is a debate, but in my opinion, it's way harder to be a lot more consistent and on fire or whatever and just, like, efficient through a 60 out of 82 game season than just the playoffs. So, you know, you got to put that in perspective, too, but... Bro, they got Trey Young all the way down there. They're saying that he's literally a regular season-made player, bro. Murray gets better almost every single time. Every all-time great player needs a great wingman. A second option that can turn into a first option with the flip of a switch. Someone whose game complements and almost contrasts their own. Jordan had Pippen. Magic had Kareem. Shaq had Kobe. Nikola Jokic has Jamal Murray. Mm. And as great as these number one options are, they couldn't have got it done without their right-hand man. But you see, the only thing is, Scottie Pippen is one of the greatest players ever. Kareem is in GOAT conversations. Kobe Bryant is a top 10 talent the league has ever seen. Jamal Murray has never even been an all-star. He has been carrying a title contending team, a championship winning team, down the stretch of massive games for multiple postseasons now. He's got one of the greatest players to ever touch a basketball on his team, and yet when the score gets tight and they need a bucket, the ball always finds its way into the hands of Jamal Murray. Fan perception of Jamal Murray's game over the years has been pretty clear. Good player, great closer, but not a top 20, maybe not even a top 25 player in the league. Nah, he's a top seven player at this point in the league, bro. I think, shit, I could break down the top seven right now. My top seven, uh, you put Murray at seven, uh, six. Um, six, you put, let's put Luca there at five. You can put SGA uh, at four. You can put you can put Jokic there at three. Put LeBron at two. Wet bananas, and then one. Steph Curry <laughs> freestyle off the dome. <laughs> Top seven NBA players of right now. Yo, updated edition too. Playoffs and everything and we're looking at. When the playoffs at. roll around, it seems like a travesty. That was that fire. That was a good top seven. Or that he wasn't voted to be an all star. But this perception is actually fair. Jamal Murray might not be one of these top players throughout the regular season. Murray has missed nearly half of all games over the last five seasons, which probably has more to do with his zero all-star nods than anything else. But even a healthy Jamal Murray falls behind many guards in his own conference throughout an 82-game schedule. Now, Murray's game is not favored as far as advanced metrics go. When evaluating Murray in the regular season, these metrics have him ranked somewhere around the 30th to 35th best player in the league in 2024. And mind you, Murray's coming off that ACL tear injury. In 2023, and in his last healthy season up until that point in 2020, where he fell somewhere between the 70th and 80th best player in the league, according to advanced metrics. That's but crazy. we know these numbers aren't a true reflection of Murray's game because we've seen him in the playoffs, where his advanced metrics look like this. And his value Ooh. skyrockets into a top 10 Stock goes top up. 12 player in they the league consider that throughout the, the postseason. And although his advanced metrics from this past season have him outside of the top three. That is a huge change, bro. Look at that. Players in the league. I don't know if I can name even 10 players who I would rather have on my team ahead of Murray right now in the playoffs. Here is a chart of the top 40 scores in the regular season throughout the since NBA 19. since 2019 among players who have played at least 10 playoff games. Jamal Bro, they Murray got D-Lo on the list. Murray <laughs> is down here in 38th place. A good score, but far from the best in the regular season. And now here are those same players and their scoring averages in the postseason over that same time span. Where Jamal Murray jumps from Will the- you Vic is in here? How? 38th highest scorer in the league to the 16th. Jordan Clarkson, nah, this is a joke, bro. Bro, I'll be putting up about 23 in the league right now. 16th highest scorer in the playoffs. But let's take this even further. Because here are those same players and how many points they score on average in the fourth quarter of playoff games. Where Jamal Murray is ahead of every other player in the league over the last six seasons. 
Jamal Murray is not only the most elite fourth quarter scorer in the playoffs over the last half decade, he is nearly the most efficient fourth quarter scorer in the playoffs outside of big men. This is the kind of production you see from MVP caliber players, all time greats at their peak, not a player who is the second option on his own team. Even after his historic run in last year's finals, Jamal Murray was floating around a top 20, top 30 player in the league this season. Some media outlets didn't even have him in their top 30, and it might be justified. Because Jamal Murray is always good in the regular season, but it's not until the postseason where he becomes great. Of all the mainstream rankings this season, The Ringer had him about as high as you're gonna see. 18th, and their one sentence description of him pretty much sums him up as a player. Yo, what? Champion. They got badges on a so What site is this? Cold-blooded champion, pull-up threat, clutch gene. Bro, what site is this? Rankings this I season, think one ringer, thing, bro, about as the high. NBA ranked? As you're gonna... What is Curry's? I just paused at the perfect time, too. I, just, I was looking at Tatum's. Yo... Curry, absolute magician, still capable, pulling off minor miracles, bioi oi, and aging distances. Human, a uh, highlight movement shooter, ball handling, clutch team. Yo, I need to know the side. I can get my NBA knowledge up. Uh, slick. Let's see. Go on on here. And their one sentence description of him pretty much sums him up as a player. Cold blooded champion who knows how Lord to make general. the world. Now, Jamal Murray isn't the only player who has the ability to take his game to another level in the playoffs. Some players that come to mind when I think of playoff risers are Jimmy Butler, Kawhi Leonard, Luka Doncic. And so here's a chart of every single player that has logged at least 2,000 playoff minutes since the turn of the century. 107 players to be exact. And they're plotted on this graph based on two key metrics. The difference in their box plus minus from the regular season to the postseason on the Y axis, and the difference in their win shares per 48 from the regular season to the postseason on the X axis. The further wow. up a player is, the more productive he is in the postseason relative to the regular season. And the yeah, further right a player is, the more he is contributing to his team's wins in the postseason relative to the regular season. So Josh Howard? <laughs> being up here if you is know, really you good. know if you haven't been knowledge is not so good. But keep in mind, this isn't about how well a player plays in the playoffs. This is a visualization of who rises the most in the playoffs relative to how Damn, well they Rondo's play on in the regular method? season. Down here in the void, we have players like Gary Payton, Kevin Love, and surprisingly, Tony Parker, who saw dips in the playoffs throughout their careers. Wow. There's James Harden, about where you would expect. As we approach Vince a more Carter. neutral territory, we'll find players like this Jimmy is more, Butler, um, Vince Carter, Stephen Curry, Kobe list. Bryant. As we creep our way towards the positive side of things, you'll find players Robert like Tim Ory, Duncan, bro. Anthony Davis, and Chauncey Billups. But all the way up here are the big game merchants, the players who really take their game to another level in the playoffs. Guys like Kawhi Leonard, Derek Fisher, Giannis, Big Shot Bob, Draymond Green, an unexpected but delightful Reggie Jackson appearance. And of course, Playoff Whoa, runner, I just see Reggie Jackson the on there. Fuck, what the heck? The 21st century. He's got a fairly oh, big lead crazy. on just about everyone else. But in terms of production and playing winning basketball, no one comes even remotely close to Jamal Murray. Who oh, is Jamal's on top. The greatest playoff riser in oh. NBA history. Hey, man. That's a pretty valid argument right there. Hey, that's a flex. It's different, you know what I'm saying? That's how I must, I must respect for Murray, bro. We've been fucking with Murray, dude. Um, but no, that's a flex. You're, he's, he's when it may be all said and done, Murray might be like the first actual NBA player um, to literally play better in the playoffs versus the regular season. He's gonna have to have like some like historic nickname for that or something. Some guy, something. What you thinking, guys?